So why are these golden conures called the Queen of Bavaria? to my channel if you're new here welcome 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 i'm caroline von petzold and i love birds i just love 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 birds they are my passion they are my life and today i'm going to talk today about golden conures i have two beautiful golden conures here their names are star and sunshine as you can see right here back there is star and this is sunshine right here so today I'm going to talk about the Queen of Bavaria. So where does the name come from, Queen of Bavaria? I'm going to finish this up at the very end of this video. So if you're new here, please hit the subscribe button, smash the bell, and also comment below and give us a like. And tell me what you think about Golden Conures. So first of all, Golden Conures are a very rare species of Conures. They are the most expensive species of Conures. And because they are so rare, they are also on the endangered list and it's very, um, they're very protected and it's illegal to sell them across state lines. Um, especially in USA, those birds are highly regulated. And the only way you can purchase them from another state is if the buyer and the seller has a permit from the Fish and Wildlife Department. Gold conyas in the native language is called Guabura. I probably butchered the name, but it's uh, from an Indian origin and the meaning is yellow. The color is like a beautiful lemon yellowish and you can see they have this beautiful dark feathers, green feathers at the end of the tips. Most, mostly at the primes and the secondaries. As you can see, this is sunshine. So I'm just gonna lift up her wings. You can see right here on this side. <laughs> Hi, sunshine, can we lift up your wings? You can see right here, this is all green. And then here at the end, she has some neon feathers from the Amazon because she got clipped by the breeder and I have in them so she can fly. So she has right now um, Amazon feathers and she has, um, yeah, she has Amazon feathers. She has these beautiful neon Amazon feathers right here. So you can see everything is beautiful and yellow. And yeah, yeah, she's really, really happy. Golden conures have also this beautiful large beige horn beak that's really, really powerful. As you can see, she's like biting me right now. Um, babies also have this green in between yellow so this will go away probably like in two years or so or maybe even sooner so babies have this yeah, green little like all over their face oh and here's my little boy this is my little boy star he has more greenish so he's more baby like than um then my girl sunshine is more mature than star and you can see like she has more yellow around her head while star here has more greenish around his head also star has been in as you can see high and tail feathers and then he has also um amazon wing feathers and he has um african gray um primaries that i imp him as well because the breeder clip him because so both of them this boy this boy has like i know she's talking this boy has like three different parrot species of feathers and she has just one she has just amazon impet feathers on her so the next thing is noise yes they are very noisy they are chattery they are chattery boxes i know they express their feelings, their joy, and their sounds, and their vocals. That's what they do in the wild. They like to call out for each other, and they voice can be heard like across the jungle because they know exactly um, 
where they flock is. So they like to call, they like to scream, they express their vocals in fear or joy or fun or playing or screeching for each other. So they're very, very noisy, very local. Out of a scale from one till 10, they are basically at eight, like in a decibels, like really, really like high pitch. <laughs> Do you wanna like, say something? Star something? <laughs> she's happy right now. You can see she's really happy. Uh -huh. You have wings. I love your wings. They're beautiful. I love you. I love you too. They're very, very affectionate, as you can see. But this will be my next. Um, let's talk still about noise and vocalization. So basically, because they have this high pitch, they express their joy, their needs, their desires to interact with their family by calling each other. And therefore they scream actually also onto each other. And this is their language, this is their parent language, not ours. And it's like basically if you have a language, like let's say I speak German and somebody else speaks English, you don't understand me when I speak German. So um, unless we speak the same language. So basically like um, I don't understand you or you won't understand me if I speak German. So you can understand each other if you speak English. So same thing as with parrots, because they speak different languages. We need to be aware that sometimes when they say something, sometimes when they say something, we don't know what they're still talking. Right now she's like, Hi. Right now she's expressing joy and she's calling. Hi. <laughs> yeah, she's really happy. She's really happy right now, expressing her joy. Good! And her wings. Yeah, you have beautiful wings! Yeah. So, the screaming may sound really intense, but it's basically just talking to us. They just want to like express their feelings. Let's say a baby, when a baby cries, it doesn't want to like um, anger its parents. It just cries because it expresses itself and its feelings for of their needs. And same thing with parrots. When when they cry, they don't cry just to anger the owner, but they're expressing something, talking to you in their language. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you're beautiful. I love you, sunshine. Let's say the size. They are beautiful. I thought they were tiny parrots, but they when I saw first time golden conyers, I was like really stoked. And I was like, wow, they are big birds. I thought they were small like green cheeks. No, uh no no they are big parrots like look at that they are almost the size like an african gray they weigh like um 250 grams like basically eight ounces the size is like 35 centimeters or like 14 inches long so they are really nice medium-sized birds they have relative short tail feathers like stock they have a like a very stocky look but they are very agile birds, so they are really good flyers. They say it's also because the ring around their eyes, those golden conyers, these golden conyers, they look a little bit like macaws because they are kind of like a close cousin to macaws. Um, they have really cool beaks. Their beak is like a nice beige color and it's very strong. <laughs> it's a really strong beak. Like those little toys that I make for them, these little bracelets, toys, they chew it off and bite it and, and they need it to play and have fun, play and climb around and just like discover the world. Okay, so um, they needs. Gold conyers have a lot of needs. Like they are not easy parrots to own. Um, honestly, like they need to chew. They are chewing a lot. I've never, I've never ever um, experienced parrots that has to chew so much than than golden conyers does. Like they are constantly chewing. In a while, they're constantly chewing on wood, on branches because they need to chew all the time. They beaks have to be really busy they are like really like little busy beaks you can see right now they're chewing like these clothes off and they're just having fun they're not swallowing it they're just chewing it and just breaking it and they have fun breaking stuff they need also toys to chew otherwise they will pluck if if they're frustrated and um little star was frustrated he had feathered destructive behavior where he was frustrated because he couldn't fly and he started plucking his wing flutters and chewing it off and i just needed to do something fast and i didn't want to 
um, I didn't want to like sedate him to get him in so I imprint myself and now he stopped with his chewing on his own feathers and he's now more happier more content more peaceful relaxed bird um but they are really known to like pluck each other's if they are stressed i know somebody who has a pair of golden conyers and they totally pluck both of them but he used them and worked them really hard in his shows and it's just really sad to see because they are highly sensitive and um, he just take them out and just display them in the shows, make pictures and put them back in the cage. And he wonders why they are so plucked because he never really spends time with them. So it's just really, really sad because you, you those birds, they are, if they are stressed and if you work them hard, like that guy did, um, they can like pluck themselves really fast. And it starts with the um, chest and then goes all the way to their wings. Okay, let's talk about diet. What do I feed them? So I give them fresh foods in the morning. They love pomegranate, they love apples, they love, um, like, they don't like strawberries, they don't like bananas, grapes and fresh fruits in the morning and berries. And then in the evening, I give them pellets and nuts. Um, they have a really high diet because they need really a high fat. Um, they have a really high fat diet, so they really need a lot of nuts. Um, just like a high set maca needs macadamia nuts in their diet, they need a lot of fat in their diet as well. So I, I'm feeding them a lot of almond, pistachios, walnuts, and, and that's what they really need. Um, and, and that can be really expensive because they raise also a lot of food. So social behavior. So in the wild, they, they, they flock together in a flock of six to 60 parrots. They are definitely flock animals and they love to play in the wild and chew in branches and they just like go into a tree and just chew and play all day and they scream at each other and they are really really noisy and um, they're very playful very curious and they have an amazing temper they have an amazing personality they're very friendly very gentle and also very confident these birds are very impressive i've never ever experienced so much friendliness and, and confidence and trust in 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 little birds before then in these golden corn ears. they are also very highly intelligent like within the first week i already teach them how to poop and command and they're doing it now every morning once i get them out of the cage they just i say poop poop and they poop in on command you guys can watch it on my short feet because i post daily shorts and this is just really really amazing to see how intelligent they are they gave me so much pleasure and fun like no other parrots like little parrots um <laughs> Oh, they also can bite. She has quite a powerful beak right there. Um, but they're just so amazing, so affectionate, very, very sweet birds. I love to spend so much time with them because they're just gorgeous and very, very loving. So once they love you and they really trust the owner, they are just amazing companions. They really are. They're also little clowns. They're so funny. Like the way how they act, the way how they like just like do things, how they eat, how they fly, how they just interact with the other birds. It's just like really, really amazing just to see how intelligent and how fun they are. They're really very expressive and very entertaining. Those golden conyers, they're not easy to breed and they're very hard to find. Um, and they're also very hard to keep because of the uh, plucking issue. I didn't know that up front. Where's your toy, Dad? And also, the reason why they're so expensive is because they're also really hard to breed. I never had a twin pair of parrots before. All my parrots I bought was just like singles. And then I just raised them in a little flock, but I never had a sibling pair like they like Star and Sunshine. So this is like a game changer for me. Just to experience like a sibling pair and raise them, it's just like super fun and it's basically like such a pleasure to see them grow and like interact with me male or female <laughs> male or female so luckily i have both i dna test them and luckily i got both a male and a female so female are harder to find than males there's more males around i got both i have a female this is sunshine she's a female and this is star he's a male 
Um, so let me talk about the female first. So Sunshine here, she's very sweet. She's very calm. She's very relaxed. She's very cuddly. She's very loving, but she's the mastermind between those two. So she thinks about things and he delivers. Like she is more like when he goes after like other birds, like very, when he kind of discovers the world, like she stays back and just observe and he does all the heavy lifting, but she kind of like um, helps him to like get his courage, right? I think she's the mastermind of this, this relationship. They say in a marriage kind of like, um, the male is the head and the female is the neck. And I think this is the same with parents, like with them. So I think she's the neck. She she kind of orchestrates and turns this little little head around. <laughs> yeah, you're like a little neck, right? Aren't you a little neck? Um, she's definitely the ringleader and she's more mature than him. As you can see also with her coating her, she has less green in her head and she's more mature. But Sunshine, she also like understands tricks faster. She learns faster. She's really a very understanding. Um, and within like couple of days, I already had them poop trained, you know, so she's got to, got it so fast. But I think it's also a female thing. Female birds learn faster than male birds. Oh, you little one. Very, very affectionate, very, very cuddly. Let's talk about Star. Let's talk about the male. So Star here, he is more very um, energetic, very bold, very adventurous. Um, and he had, he was, he had also a lot of anxiety because he was clipped and he wanted to do his own choices and go places and he couldn't because he got handicapped by the breeder uh, clipped him. And also the tails, they were both, like, both of them had, like, she has only, like, out of 12 tail feathers, she only has three and she didn't chew off her tail. And he has zero, he, he had zero tail. So he has now three tail feathers and she has three of her own tail feathers. But um, basically he was, he is very bold and now he's even like more confident, more bolder that he can fly now. He's happier than before. Um, he's very territorial, especially with the cage. Um, also when happy or angel land on the cage, he goes after them. But when the big birds land on the cage, like he, 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 he's of course like, like he kind of like, like when the little birds land on his cage, he's like, really, he goes after them because he knows that like he can chase them away, especially happy our African Grey. So they have a love-hate relationship with each other, which is really cute. <laughs> Roll the clip. Yeah, so um, he is very outgoing and he is ready to attack if it has to be. But he's also very affectionate and he loves to give kisses and he just loves to fly, especially to me. So it was it's easier him to train him than her. She's a better flyer though. She knows how to fly so good. Her wings are perfect. His is like a little like a patchwork because he chewed a lot of his feathers off. So he's not as a good flyer as her and that makes him sometimes a little bit more frustrated. But he knows how to cope with that. So, um, Conyers, Golden Conyers are very, so Golden Conyers are very, 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 very social birds. You'll never see a, not a more amazing parrot species than Golden Conyers. I think so. Except the Hyacinth Macaw. Like, Hyacinth, they are the pinnacle of parrots, the cream de la cream of all parrots. And second, uh, Golden Conyers. So it doesn't, it doesn't really matter if it's female or male because they are both amazing birds. They're phenomenal birds. They're just very cuddly, very loving. And they just also love other parrots. They don't really go attack other parrots. They just chase other parrots away from the cage. But they're very loving, very confident, beautiful birds. They don't like to be alone. And I'm happy I got a pair because they are more prone to plucking if they are alone. And best if you buy them together. Like they make a really good couple. If you can get two together, I will recommend just get two together. They definitely need companionship and they just love to be together. They are just very, very social birds. How long can Golden Conyers live? What's their lifespan? Their lifespan is between 30 and 35 years. 
which make, makes it a good good time for a parrot like um i think um lorikeys are between 20 and 25 so they live probably 10 years longer than a lorikey but it's still a really nice lifespan to to own to own a pair of golden conures trainability how, is it good to train them can you train golden conures absolutely yes Gong Conyers are highly intelligent, super playful, super fun, super intelligent. They have just so much going for them and they learn so fast. They are super flyers. They fly so nicely and it's just really nice just to see their personality and to see like how they interact with each other. They can be taught everything. They're not good talkers, so they won't talk a lot, but they can learn few words. They can they can talk, but they talk mostly this the parrot language. One, two, three, go! Oh! Come on, come on, come on, come on. <laughs> Right now, how much do a golden conure cost? So when I was looking for a golden conure, like it was so expensive. Like I wanted specifically a baby. I was looking even for an older bird, but then I was like, hmm, I don't know if an older bird will be good, but I was looking into rescuing an older bird and I found an eight year old um, and he wanted um, almost 6,000 for an eight year old golden conure. And um, babies are between now five thousand and seven and a half eight thousand dollars for one bird i know somebody who had baby golden conures and she would charge five thousand for them but she wouldn't sell sell them to me she just wanted to keep all her babies which is fine so um i got them from a local breeder here in um, california and um i just saw his advertising online and I just reached out to him. So we paid 6500 for each, even though like I was just so happy. I was just so happy just to have golden conures just because they are so hard to get. So yeah, 6500 for each. So that's a pretty steep price, but they are worth every penny because <laughs> they are really worth they are really gold worth. And usually what happened with breeders is they trade with, because they don't want to interbreed. So breeders trade their golden conures with each other um, across state lines, but then only with permits with the wild and fish fish department. But that's what they do. It's, it's really hard to find them because they are also very hard to breed. That's why they are so expensive. Plus they are also endangered. Um, you can watch the video how I got them right here. I'm going to put a link right up here so you can just click and watch. And I will put a link also in the description how I got my beautiful golden conure. So why are these golden conures called the Queen of Bavaria? Okay, so here's the question. Why are these gold conures called the Queen of Bavaria? Even though they are not from Bavaria, they're not from Germany, right? Bavaria is a state in Germany. So why are they called um, the Queen of Bavaria, these gold conures? Because they are locally in Brazil. They come from Brazil. That's the native habitat. They can be found right next to the Amazon River and they are almost extinct, but um, they're not from Germany. So Georg Markgraf, this German naturalist, went to Brazil to just went to Brazil and he discovered the golden conures. And that's why they are called the Queen of Bavaria. Call them Genia Conures. So he didn't just discover the gold queen of Bavaria, but also other like the green cheek conures and other species of conures and the sun conures. They are all from the same region. And um, but it was first later in 1788 that the Genya conure um, was discovered by another German called Johann Gremlin. And then um, after several reversions in um, to an American guy whose name was Robert Richway, um, they put in the name in 1916, the Golden Conyers Queen of Bavaria, after Georg Mark Markgraf, the 
because he was the first guy to discover gold conyers in Brazil. So there you have it. That's why they are called gold conyers. The Germans were again first on the set and make it make them known to the world, which is really cool again. Of course, it has to be a German, right? <laughs> Yeah, sunshine and green. They're just so beautiful and they are basically worth every penny. I love them so, so much. I've never had a more expressive, more fun, more intelligent, like, like couple like like these beautiful conyers as you can see they give me so much joy and pleasure and i just love them so much so if you like this video guys please subscribe and give me a thumbs up comment below if you don't know what to comment just put in a 111 because then youtube will help me to get my analytics back up just comment 111 that will work too and yeah so that's that this concludes this video about my golden colors right thank you for watching guys i'll see you in a new episode of caroline one pets out says bye guys bye bye this is all what you have to know about gold conyers okay let's go kiss Mwah!